Welcome to the COVID care series presented by Apollo Hospitals. This is Dr. Srinidhi Chidambaram. Unfortunately, we are again faced with the next wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is sweeping all over India and many states have started imposing restrictions like night curfews and weekend lockdowns. There is, of course, a reassuring news that many of the cases are quite mild so far, but we don't know yet. And anyway, it is a kind of a shock and emotional distress to many of us that we again have to go through this struggle. But the only way to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic is to stay informed, aware, and deal with it calmly. Whether it is Delta or whether it is Omicron, the ways of prevention are anyway mostly the same. But it is concerning uh, especially for people with pre-existing conditions and non-communicable diseases, such as heart disease or diabetes or hypertension, cancer, kidney or liver ailments. These are called comorbid conditions. So should people with these conditions take extra precautions? What has changed for them in the pandemic with the succe successive waves that are happening? What will happen if they get COVID or how is it with Omicron and comorbidities? So to explain all this in detail, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. D. Suresh Kumar, Consultant, Department of Infectious Diseases and Tropical Medicine for Apollo Hospitals, Greens Road, Chennai, Children's Hospital, Chennai, Vanagaram, Chennai, and also Apollo Specialty Hospitals, Trichy. Dr. Suresh Kumar did his MBBS from the Stanley Medical College, Chennai, and also uh, his MD from there, and then went on to do a fellowship in HIV uh, at the CDC, and then uh, at also uh, did, uh, did his uh, special training at the Government Hospital of Thoracic Medicine in Tambaram. He has a certificate of knowledge in clinical tropical medicine and traveler's health from the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, and also the Infection Control and Antimicrobial Stewardship ID Fellows course in 2010. He has a fellowship in infectious diseases uh, from the National Board of Examinations, New Delhi, Speciality Certification in Infectious Disease from the Royal College of Physicians, UK, and is also a postdoctoral fellow in infectious diseases from the Dr. MGR Medical University, Tamil Nadu. He is the chairperson of the Infection Control Committee of uh, several of our Apollo hospitals, at Vanagaram, Nellore, and also at Karapakam, Chennai, and is a member of several societies, won several awards, uh, such as the ICPIC Geneva Travel Award for many successive years, the Dr. J.C. Patel and Dr. B.C. Mehta Best Papers Award, and many more, and has also presented many research papers. Hello, Dr. Suresh thank Kumar, thank you so much for joining us here today amidst your very busy schedule. So today's session, as I said, is about the Omicron variant of COVID-19 and does it cause severe illness in people with comorbidities? And I look forward to your views and I'm sure our viewers will be much more enlightened at the end of this session. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your kind invitations and kind words of introductions. Yes, now a hot topic across India, not only for Tamil Nadu, Across India, it is so micron. Everywhere the surge is happening now, and people are really worried whether what, what is going to happen with Omicron. A lot of things, a lot of questions we are daily facing, not only from the public, but also from the lot of physicians, a lot of practitioners. They keep on asking so many questions to us daily basis. So we are trying to answer. So the sessions we'll try to figure out what, what best we can provide some knowledge to the people as well as to the practicing docs. So maybe we can begin with just talking about uh, comorbidities itself in relation to COVID-19, uh, right from the beginning, how it has been with the different variants. So it started in the wave one. We have seen people with comorbid that are affected severely with COVID. Particularly in wave one, in April, May, June 2020, we have seen people who got comorbid conditions. Suppose COVID stuck to them, they got a lot of issues, they faces. They got into respiratory difficulties. They went into ventilator. The death rate was very high in wave one. In wave two, not only people with comorbid, the Delta wave, people with young people also affected more. But as far as the latest version, the Omicron version is concerned, so far it again switching back to the wave one form. It's going to affect people with comorbid conditions only. Young people, particularly people who are vaccinated, even though they got comorbid, if they are vaccinated, they are protected. And people who are already infected with COVID also, they are protected. So who is vulnerable to Omicron? People who have got comorbid conditions and not vaccinated, 
previous slow COVID infections, they are vulnerable to this new wave of infections. They are the one to watch. They are going to have a lot of complications or issues with COVID. They are closely monitoring them. So far, it's the initial wave, initial phases of wave three we are in right now. But top mm -hmm. of right now, today morning also I had a that for renal CKD patients on hemodialysis, chronic kidney disease patients on hemodialysis. He says he doesn't want to take vaccinations. And he was tested positive with Omicron. The his gene was missing out in the report, probably COVID or probably Omicron. So he came day three, day four. But today itself, he started developing breathing difficulty. So people who have comorbid conditions, not vaccinated, definitely the risk of getting severe infections, whether it's Omicron or COVID, the severity will always be there for people who have got comorbid conditions. So definitely the important message there is the vaccination. And especially if you have comorbid conditions, I think you cannot afford to not only miss the vaccination, but also now we have the precautionary dose. So what, what would you like to say about that? Uh, should people, uh, especially with this Omicron wave coming on in places all over the country, and we have a booster program starting on a Monday. So do you think there is... Our, as a matter of some urgency, people with comorbid conditions, even after two doses, should uh, take their precautionary dose? A very well valid question to me. That on example, you rightly point out, Monday we are starting the precautionary dose, otherwise, yes. third or booster dose, whatever people call. Right now, yes, as you rightly told, comorbid conditions people, two doses of vaccinations, still the chances of getting COVID is still possible. It's not severity, it's still the infection is possible for people who are taken two doses people who have got underlying comorbid conditions. What this precautionary dose or third dose or booster dose is going to do, the chances of getting infection, I'm not talking about the severity. The severity is already protected with two doses of vaccinations. The death, the ventilator, the ICU stay, everything is prevented by two doses of vaccinations. The precautionary dose, what we are talking now, is going to prevent the infection also with Omicron. So people who got comorbid conditions, please go ahead, once you're eligible on January 10th itself, please go ahead and take the vaccinations. It gives a lot of protection to you. Who are all the diseases need to take first? People with all comorbids, diabetic, chronic kidney disease, heart, coronary heart disease patients, immunosuppressed dose, for example, cancer chemotherapy, or people taking long-term steroids, please go ahead because your immune system is not appropriate. Please go ahead and take the vaccinations, provided if you're eligible on January 10th, because some timeline also, 39 weeks, we need to wait. Suppose you have taken the vaccinations in Jan, February, or even March, you are eligible right now. So please, please go ahead and take the precautionary dose. Definitely, it reduces the infection risk. Not only the death, not only the severity, it prevents the infection risk itself. For example, one of the paper, one of the scientific paper from Denmark, it showed people who have taken two doses of vaccinations, 76% of people are infected. People who have taken the precautionary dose or third dose, we call only 7% of the people are infected. So it dropped from 76% to 7% because of the third or booster dose or precautionary dose, whatever dose. So without faith, people got comorbid conditions. You are eligible. Government has also given permission to take vaccinations. Without hesitations, what you have taken for the first dose and second dose, please go and take the precautionary dose. But doctor, how virulent so far? Now you, we've all started seeing Omicron, maybe not to the extent of the UK or other countries, but slowly we are also getting the Omicron. Is it a good thing that you know the Omicron variant uh, becomes dominant? Uh, because we have been receiving, uh, you know, we keep getting a lot of this news and uh, WhatsApp forwards that it is really a good thing to get Omicron and, you know, then you will, it's like having another booster and all that. But uh, these kind of perceptions without any specific evidence is also not very safe. So what is your view? I mean, is this Omicron, have you seen it uh, so far being virulent in the sense severe disease, hospitalization, uh, oxygen, death, uh, or is it too early to say really? No, what we are seeing so far is initial cases. We rightly point out we are in the initial cases of day 7 to day 10, whatever cases of Omicron, because there is no genomic study available across the world. What we are indirectly implicating from the routine PCR, the HGN resort we call as probable Omicron. I can suggest only probable Omicron. It's not probable. Can I interrupt you there and ask you to uh, explain this S gene? Because that is another thing that is floating around. So what exactly is this? How do we find out if it's Omicron? Usually the PCR kits, if you do a swab test for your COVID, 
they do by PCR. It's called polymerase chain reaction method. Yeah. If they, they check three genes mainly. One is called the E gene, that's for the screening, whether the virus is coronavirus or non-coronavirus. Following E gene, they need to confirm with two more genes to check whether this is SARS-CoV-2 or some other viruses. For that, they use multiple genes. One gene is called N, other is called ORF, third is called S, and some lab use RDRP gene. These are all the four common genes people are using it. E gene as a screening tool, and subsequently these things are using N, ORF, RDRP, and S. Okay. Most of the time in COVID, for example, in Delta, all the genes will be present. It will show present, present, present. But as far as Omicron is concerned, the E gene will be positive. The N gene will test it positive. ORF positive. Even RDRP is positive. But S gene, if you see, is missing. S gene not detected will come. So that indicates probable Omicron. We not confirm it. We need to confirm by genomic sequencing to see entire structure. But this is a shortcut for you to see whether the virus is Omicron or not by looking at that gene called S gene in the report. But most of the labs, they don't have the kit. Initially in 2020, March, they started doing this kit, but unfortunately they changed the kit to the new kit that doesn't contain the S gene, that contains other two genes, N and ORF. So it's very difficult with standard lab. For example, now Apollo, we do this S gene also. So we can able to tell whether you can have more probable Omicron or it's, it's not Omicron, probable only I can put it. To confirm 100%, we need genomic sequencing one. So, so far, what we have seen with Omicron initial phases, day seven to day 10, we are living it now. So far, the cases are only mild. But what sort of intuition I'm seeing? People who are vaccinated. Two doses they completed, I'm seeing with Omicron. Similarly, I have seen people with people with uh, previous infections, either the Delta virus or previous version, they got infected. Again, they got reinfected now. But I told you just now, I saw a CKD patient, chronic kidney disease patients, not vaccinated. On day four, day five of the illness, he still required oxygen. But the test was not done in our system. It was done outside. So I'm not sure whether it's a Delta or Omicron. But probably right now, across the world and across India, Omicron is going on. So Omicron will behave like a typical COVID for people who are not vaccinated. There are a lot of confusions. People say, this is cold. I want to get Omicron and get the immunity. Definitely no. People who got already infected, people who have taken two doses of vaccinations, if Omicron comes, for you, it might behave as a cold or it may behave as an upper respiratory tract infections. But people who are never infected, people who have never taken a vaccinations, this is COVID one. Don't call it Omicron, this is cold, I'm going to get immunity. No. Yeah. You need to suffer and you need to go for respiratory difficulties or ventilator or even death is also possible. Even WhatsApp being circulating. First death, the Omicron happened in Rajasthan. A lot of circulations is happening. But one more concern, why we need to worry about this Omicron, even though this is not going to kill you, we have seen a lot of messages. Today also in Hindu paper, we see a lot of messages saying that cancellations. For example, some of the hospital workers are infected. No electric surgery is possible. Similarly, airlines are, uh, airlines are canceling the flights because cabin crew are affected. So, so many cabin crew are affected. There's no person to run the flight. Similarly, so many hospital staff are affected. None of them can operate for protein lectin cases. So this affects the services also, not only your death, but other essential services and whatever services we need. So many people affected at the same time. You can't get the same support. So you can't fly, you can't go to the electric surgeries, a lot of things. Are other implications we can call, not only the direct implications, these are all indirect implications also. Omicron create a problem. And off late concern, the very last two days, some of the unauthorized reports only can put it. In Telegraph from US, they're showing that from UK, it shows oxygen requirements slightly going up in Delhi. So that's a real concern for us. Oxygen requirements slightly going up in Delhi hospitals. That's a real concern. I think the other real concern also, I think, whether it is people with comorbidities or anybody else, I think they just uh, now, it's, we have reached a situation where, you know, we're a bit tired of, you know, all the precautions and everything. So somewhere that mental fog has also come in, I think, you know, nobody wants to do it. But then at the same time, we are in that odd situation where we are neither here nor there. So let's hope that it doesn't really become worse. So again, coming back to the comorbidities, um, is, is it uh, also true that, you know, there was also some talk that Omicron evades the existing immune system, even vaccines and all that. Uh, is it uh, likely to be true? And is it going to be like even worse with people with already compromised immune systems like people with comorbidities? 
hundred percent true only I can put it right now. People who got infected, we are seeing again they are getting reinfected. Even though they infected in month of April, May, that is the last version only, the Delta version only they got it. Not I am talking about the twenty twenty version. They yeah, got yeah. twenty one version with the Delta. Still people are getting infected now again. People are getting infected. That means people's immune system already they got immunity from the previous infections, but it not recognize the Omicron viruses. Particularly people who got age above the 60, people who got multiple comorbid conditions, the chances of recognizing the viruses, even if they got infected. I've seen people, they got infected in the month of April 2021. They got two doses of vaccinations in the month of July and October. They've taken July and October. Now again, they got infected. So that means Omicron can evade your immune system. It can, it can confuse your immune system. So your immune system failed to recognize the virus and virus enters the body. But fortunately, it did not enter the lung and it causes, it won't cause any major difficulty in the breathing or ventilator support or something. But still, it evades your immune system and virus can get into your body. But previously, not necessarily 2020, 2021 April, June, first shot of vaccinations and again October, second shot of vaccinations, still people are getting infected. So don't think I got vaccinations. I don't get any COVID infections. People are asking, doctor, I completed two doses. In fact, one person asked, he came from Dubai. In Dubai, they given first two doses, Sinovac. That's a killed vaccine similar to a co-vaccine. Then they given a booster doses of Pfizer vaccine, also two doses. Totally extracted four shots, two killed vaccine of Sinovac and two doses of Pfizer. In the month of November is the last dose. He was tested positive in December last week. So vaccines will prevent serious disease. Vaccines will prevent hospitalizations. Vaccines will prevent ventilator support, but vaccines will not prevent infections. Mask only will prevent infections. And that is what we all need to again get back to the routine of the masks because I think in between we have all become a bit, uh, I mean, a lot of now we have to get back to that stricter protocol. Uh, so now uh, we will talk a little bit about uh, exactly like, you know, maybe just to refresh people's memories with people with compromised immune system or comorbidities, what kind of, uh, why do they get hospitalized? What happens to them? What are the different complications that they have? I know this is discussed many times, but I think it's worth to get it oh, once again. Yeah. We discussed multiple times. In fact, we have discussed multiple times in the past. So the common complications of the COVID is a respiratory problem, respiratory difficulty, it affects the lungs. So the person may find it difficult to breathe. We call it the medical term of acute respiratory distress syndrome. In short, this is a swelling of both the lungs. The person find very difficult to breathe on day five to day seven after the COVID infections. They find very difficulty. Whatever oxygen they are taking is not sufficient to maintain the blood levels of oxygen saturations. So the commonest complications of COVID whether the patient has got comorbid conditions and people who don't have immunity is pneumonia, severe pneumonia that causes swelling on the lung that is called acute respiratory distress syndrome. And second problem what we face is most of the time with COVID infections is blood clots. The blood clots can happen to the most of the vital organs. It affects your blood vessels or the lung that causes pulmonary embolism. The clot we call medical term is called embolism, small blood clot. That if the blood clot is present in the blood vessels or the lung, that is called pulmonary embolism. Again, that also causes breathing difficulty, some amount of chest pain, some amount of congestions in the lung. Similarly, any other blood vessels, for example, blood vessels to the heart can cause mild heart pain. That's why myocardial infections or heart attack can happen. Similarly, blood vessels in the brain got affected that can cause a stroke. Similarly, blood vessels in the peripheral part of your body can cause gangrene, black color skin discolorations can happen. So clot is the second mechanism bothering the people. And third thing, the sugar levels. We know in the COVID-2, wave 2, a lot of people got black fungus because the sugar levels per se can go with COVID infections. Not necessarily the people who are diabetic, their levels can go up. People who are in the borderline category are people not diagnosed with diabetes. Once COVID comes, the sugar levels goes up. Probably it has got receptors in the pancreas where insulin is secreted. So the sugars can go up. Other organs like kidney, it can affect the kidney failure, a lot of kidney failures, new onset. So far, there's no problem. Following COVID, we are seeing kidney diseases. Particularly people who got diabetes, people who got hypertension. Already, the kidney functions are on the verge of uh, failure status. Once COVID sits on the top, the kidneys start failing. So this type of cases we encountered both in wave one as well as wave two 
and this is early phases of wave three we are sitting right now. So these are all the complications. Don't think COVID can cause severe pneumonia. It can cause blood clot. It can cause sugar stuff can go up. It can affect your kidney functions. Almost mid to toe, even skin manifestations also. A lot of skin manifestations we have seen. As I saw head, even people got memory disturbances. These all long COVID symptoms can happen. Acute COVID stroke can happen. A lot of headache, other symptoms in the brain. And similarly, almost all the organs, if you want to label any organs, we have seen all the organ manifestations during the COVID, particularly people who got comorbid. Why? Because already the system is on uh, overworking for them. They're stretching with the help of whatever immune system they're working on it. Once the overburden of virus, the system collapses, the organs start failing. That's the problem we are facing now. So what would be your advice to people uh, with comorbidities? Now, we are not in a situation where people can actually, not everybody will be able to be in complete isolation at home. That era has kind of gone. So if they will be needing to go out to work or uh, other, they, they are out. So what, what precautions would you give to them? Nowadays, we are talking about the vaccine plus strategy. Vaccine is mandatory. The bottom line is vaccine. Whatever thing you need to take the vaccines. Now one more shot of preventive dose or third dose you need to take. So first step. Second step, we need to know mask. We know the vaccines are not preventing infections. So we need to prevent infections by wearing a mask. Previously, people told about cloth mask. Ideally, now the guidelines are switching over. For example, the CDC guidelines and most of the guidelines insisting tight-fitting mask. Either you need to wear a surgical mask, tight-fitting as a two mask, or need to go what the healthcare workers I am wearing like an NDP mask. We need to wear that one. And third thing is crowd. Basically, in a crowded environment, one person got infected. Nowadays, we are getting a new version. The transmission risk is very, very, very high. So in a crowd, one person got infections, we are going to get infected. So try to avoid crowd. The physical distance what we are maintaining. The physical distance is mandatory right now. And fourth and important thing is we call ventilations. For example, if you close to a closed environment, the chances of one person infected persons who are sitting in the closed environment, almost everybody, a lot of outbreaks. For example, the first outbreak in Norway, the person traveled from South Africa, came here, two doses completed. He has, uh, he has no symptoms. He attended the Christmas party that day. 120 people were there in the hotel. Almost 100 people in the same hall. What happened? 80, almost 100 people got infected. The remaining 20 not present in the hall, but they were in the hotel at that point of time. They are also infected. So it indicates People need to wear masks. Whether you are vaccinated or not, wear a mask. Avoid closed environment. Try to avoid the closed environment. Try to avoid unnecessary gathering. For example, if you go for work, that's fine. For unnecessary gathering, for outings and everything, we need to avoid. Particularly when wave 3 started hitting, a lot of cases happening. This is the time we need to try to avoid almost all the outings. That's the best thing I can tell. And fourth important thing, other Western societies they started doing. That's called rapid antigen test. In find out if you are infected or not. If you are going out to one place, coming back, whether before going home, you can do a test yourself and go home. It shows results within 20 to 30 seconds or maximum minute or so, like a pregnancy test it is. Easily so you can find Do we have these, uh, I mean, we, we have some brands of the rapid tests in India also, no, doctor? Yeah, yeah. right now, a lot of labs, a lot of brands available, and a lot of brands has been approved by ICMR also. It's okay. very, in Western society, for example, U.S., a lot of uh, posters this thing out of stock, out of stock. Fortunately, yeah. India, a lot of companies are manufacturing. It's very cheap. There, it costs around three to four dollars or even fourteen dollars. Now the uh, Walmart has increased the rate to nineteen dollars per kit. In India, it is hardly fifty to sixty rupees or maximum hundred rupees. You can get this. When we can take any of the ICMR approved brands and uh, keep them. Uh, like my lab kit is available right now. That's approved, and most of the brands they come with a decent company background and they do reasonably well. It indicates whether you are infectious to other people or not. It will not say whether your infection is present in your body or not, because this will detect the virus when the virus level is very high level. For example, the virus is present this much, it will detect. When the virus is present this much, the chances of detection by the rapid kit is very unlikely. So a rapid kit will say whether you are infectious to other people, whether the virus present in your body is very high level or not. If it is very low level, for example, initial one or two days, the virus is not creeping in your body, that time you are doing it. Negative, don't think, I don't infect it. Negative rapid test will say you are not infectious to other people. Negative rapid test will not say you are not infected. So keep in mind, that's why government is not 
fully giving approval to this kit. Why? People are thinking in terms of rapid test kit negative, I don't have COVID. Even PCR negative, don't think I don't have COVID. PCR also will mess us out. All tests positive has got meaning. Negative doesn't rule out infections. But negative rapid test will rule out you are not infectious to other people. Provided if you do two occasions, if two occasions is negative, you can confidently say you are not infectious to other people. But still, you may carry the virus in your body, but you are not transmitting the infection to other people. Let's keep in mind. There is also the next other aspect with people with comorbidities about uh, their regular care, the non-COVID care. So now again, uh, we have uh, you know people wondering whether they should go for their chemotherapy or whether they should go for their uh, checkup if they go get their sugars tested. Uh, so what would be your advice to them at this situation, whether they should continue doing all that or should they wait? Yeah, first thing, whether it's elective or emergency or whether it's routine, it's mandatory for them or not. We need to decide. If it is mandatory, we can't postpone it. Definitely, we need to go for it. If you can able to postpone, if you can able to do safely under the guidance of your doctor, I can wait for a month or I can wait for next six weeks. This procedure, I can hold on. That's best means avoid time because the wave of Omicron or third wave is very fast for one month and within a month's time or within a six weeks' time, the expectation is going to go down. So next six weeks, tentatively, you can ask your doctor, ask your surgeon whether I can postpone or whether I can hold this procedure under the guidance of your doctor. You don't decide yourself. Please ask your doctor who is treating. He has got better knowledge. So you ask your consultant. If the consultant feels, yes, this procedure or this intervention, so you can wait for four to six weeks, fine. Then you can hold on. Suppose you can't do it. Then third thing you need to ask whether I'm eligible for the preventive dose. Take the preventive dose before doing some interventions. If preventive dose is also taken and the procedure is also very important, we need to follow the vaccine plus strategy. Wear the mask whenever you go for procedures. Try to avoid the closed environment or ask the people to keep some air filters. Right now, closed environment, we can't open the windows everywhere. At least we can keep the air filters one. And third thing, we can space out the distance between the people. When the crowd is not there, at that point of time, we can go. Instead of ever going in a crowded night, we need to literally place our appointment and go a little late or something we need to do. That's what we need to follow. If it's really essential, we need to go and do the thing. Do under utmost precautions. What about uh, other non-procedural non uh, things? Like, for example, if there is a, a diabetic patient who has to go for his blood sugar test or some kind of uh, follow-up uh, blood tests or follow-up appointments. So those kind of things also, is it... Uh, Okay, to the things they can do in a home itself. For example, most of the people with the diabetic, instead of going for a blood sugar, the venous, I know venous is perfect, but at least a food way of doing in the home fits with capillary glucose monitoring, the finger prick test we can be able to do. Some other interventions we can be able to do for next four to six weeks because the wave is now started in peak. So this is the time try to avoid clothes, try to step out unnecessarily. But at the same time, you need to monitor your health, you need to take care of health, you can't compromise your health, and you can't land in emergency. So for that, what is the best alternative? If you got some good alternative in the form of capillary glucose monitoring for diabetic, similarly, if you got a self-measuring like a BP kits, a lot of like a BP monitors are available. You yourself can monitor. If the monitor shows consistently high values, you need to consult the doctor. So these type of interventions, you need to do. But again, we are insisting, don't take your decisions on your own. Consult under practicing work, give an idea work, monitoring your health. Please consult him and get his opinion also. If he agrees for that, he can do it. Without his knowledge and without his agreement, if you do something, then people land in emergency is a bit difficult. It's confusing also right now. So try to get the input from your consulting doctor. Get his consent also. If he also agree for it, do it. If he says other better options is there, you can do the other better options. But try unnecessary. For example, people have got reasonably sugar is maintained for the last three months of sugar, the HB1 AC we call. The parameters within 6 to 6.5 or 7, or maximum 7.5 also is fine. That point of time, you can wait for six weeks. You can't shoot up again within 10 or 30 within a short span, provided your diet is good, you are taking the medications regularly. There is no need to worry about it. So these simple modifications in consultations with the consultant, you can be able to do it now. Okay. Is there anything else, doctor, that you would like to uh, advise our patients? Yeah, to the, yeah, the third way, the concern is now the pediatric children are very infected right now. The concern is Comparing to the other countries, for example, South Africa itself, compared to the wave one, wave two, wave three, wave one is wild type, wave two is beta, wave three is delta. Now they face Omicron. 
the hospitalizations in children is very high. Similarly, US has got a problem with children hospitalized no more compared to other ways. UK also, the children hospitalization is growing up because they are not vaccinated group. So we need to be really careful with children. Uh, the children also are eligible in vaccinations in India. So take the vaccinations without any hesitancy, go and do the vaccine for the children also. We are giving routine vaccines for a lot of children for other, other preventable diseases. Similarly, give this COVID vaccines also. Once your children is eligible, give the vaccines. And similarly, children also, the mass parents, and they, they do a lot of things. They start going to the school, they start after a long time. They want to mingle with the friends, they do a lot of things there. So unnecessary things can be avoided. We have the mask. Again, the schools also should maintain proper ventilation systems and opening the windows. Crowd, the crowd control also they need to do. For example, alternate school people are arranging A batch and B batch. They are doing something odd numbers, even numbers. They need to do reduce the space right now. Try to do as much as activity as outdoor possible. And children also need to take vaccinations. The worrying thing is children hospitalizations in the distant world. We need to monitor closely next couple of weeks how the trend is going to behave in India. Okay. Sure, doctor. So thank you so much for explaining this uh, whole thing about the current wave and the comorbid conditions in detail. I'm sure you all uh, learned a lot from this session, dear viewers. And of course, if you have more queries, you can always put your comments and your queries on any of our social media channels or send emails to us. We're always there to assist you. And please remember that you have to stay safe and Everything is really in your hands. You know all the tools, you can do it. So it's basically the avoiding the crowds and the sanitizing, hand washing, and then uh, making sure that you're wearing the mask and of course the vaccine. So with all these tools, I'm sure you will stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much and see you all again soon. Namaste. Namaste.